Good day, we got Keith Bonnerchuk, President, CEO, and Director of COSA Resources. We are at the symposium, the Rural Symposium 25. This is my first year here. Uh, how are you enjoying your time here? Yeah, it's been a great show and first good to see you again, Steve. Yeah. Uh, we met probably a couple of years ago, I'd say, for the first time. But yeah, it's, it's been a great show. It's good to see the floor busy with people kind of interested in what, what we're up to. And yeah, so it's been a pretty good first few days here for sure. Yeah. So. Coastal Resources, you guys are uranium exploration. Yeah. So first of all, before we get into the company, if you can tell us about yourself and how you got into that. Yeah, certainly. So I, uh, I grew up in a place called Saskatchewan in Canada, which just happens to be home to the highest grade and largest uranium deposits in the world. I had ended up taking a geology degree and got on with a company called Denison Mines. Um, they had just made the Phoenix discovery and I spent nine years working on, the, on, on all those projects. Um, I decided to go back to school, took an MBA uh, from University of British Columbia, moved to Vancouver, ended up with a small company called ISO Energy, uh, another uranium company. We happened to make a discovery when I was there and it turned out to be the highest grade indicated uranium resource in the world. We obviously rode that stock from about 30 cents up to $6. And then from there we moved on and I started building Costa Resources. I got the same uh, discovery team from ISO Energy back together again. Nice. And we're looking to do it again here with Costa Resources. So I guess, you know, I've kind of been in uranium really since about 2007. And, you know, finally I might time here at Bull Market in uranium where I'm actually looking for it. It's a great time. Yeah, exactly. So you brought the same team over? Yeah, You got exactly. the same track record of success you're bringing to Costa? Yeah, we're a team that's perfectly designed for exactly what we're doing, and that's exploring for uranium in the Athabasca Basin in Saskatchewan. And what's unique about that area, just for perspective, is, you know, it's it's not something that, you know, Canada is obviously a large producer of uranium, and it's been through good fortune that they really have a geologically unique area in northern Saskatchewan called the Athabasca Basin. Just for perspective, the average grade of uranium deposit outside the Athabasca Basin is about 0.2%. Uranium. So you pick up a piece of rock there, 0.2% of that is uranium. The hurricane deposit that we found during our last company, the average grade of that is 34.5% uranium. Wow. Over 90% of that deposit is 50% uranium or higher. And so you pick up a rock there, ha over half of that is uranium. So it's truly wow. some of the most valuable rock in the world. We're addicted to treasure hunting in that area. We love it. And we're poised to hopefully have the same success here with Coastal Resources. Can you tell us about the area that you have and what are you finding? What do you have? Yeah, so certainly. So we're located, our projects, we have just over 200,000 hectares. We're located on the east part of the Athabasca Basin. So that's where all the current mines and mills are. That's where Cameco has the two largest uranium mines in the world, MacArthur River and Cigar Lake. Um, a way that we've designed the package or projects that we have is a good way to think about these things is locally these deposits are very hard to find, mm -hmm. but regionally there is a pattern to them. You have these big, long corridors where you can map down from MacArthur River, past Denison's projects, down to Key Lake, mm -hmm. and we like to call these uranium corridors. And so our chairman, Steve, said, let's get as much ground as we can within these interpreted corridors to really set ourselves up for success. And, you know, we managed to acquire a decent looking land package throughout the Athabasca Basin. It's very competitive there right now. Everybody's flocking to that area just based on the recent sentiment in the uranium space. And then recently we did a transaction with Denison Mines, whereby we acquired a 70% interest in three of their projects. You know, nice. Denison is, you know, a $2 billion US company. Um, they now own 20% of us. Last financing, they maintain that 20% interest in us. And so we now have that strategic support from a Denison Mines. And they had fantastic projects and very familiar with them. I spent nine years working at Denison, so these are yeah. projects we really wanted. And now we're actively exploring those projects. And Murphy Lake North is the project that we're currently drilling on. Mm -hmm. Coincidentally, it's right next to the hurricane deposit, which is what we found during our time at ISO Energy. So we're back in our backyard and we're drilling right now and, and we're excited. It's I never thought we'd get another piece of ground in that area again, and we have, and the drills are turning. So very, very excited. I think you know what you're doing there. Yeah, we love that area, <laughs> for sure, for sure. So you said Denison owns 20% of, of you us, guys? Yeah, and then they own 30% of our the project we're drilling. Yeah. Okay. Could you tell us about who owns, like in terms of institutions, yep. insiders, are there major holders that you can share? Uh, so I'd say what we call strategic and kind of, I'd say long uranium funds. They control just over 20% of us, 20 to 25% of us. Um, us, management, insiders, advisors, we control about 15%, and then Denison controls 20%. 
So that leaves you know a float of really less than half uh, of what he called retail and, and other groups that are involved in it. So it's yeah. very tightly held um, from a share standpoint. We continue to buy. I, every financing we participate in, I continue to buy on market. Yeah. And I think obviously having Dennis in there, it's you know it's really strengthened our, our cap structure. So you've got the backing of Dennis, and you obviously have be, you have the belief from Denison. So what does Denison see that maybe the average or people who don't know about you guys don't know about yet? I think there's obviously, I mean, a long track record of working together. I worked there for nine years, right? So there's a familiarity with their groups. And what they saw was we're starting a new venture. We're a team that's highly decorated with, with the, the uh, discoveries that we've made in the past. And so it became a natural fit where they say an opportunity, okay, we have these projects that we're not going to be able to explore during this cycle because our capital is going to developing a mine. Mm -hmm. And so we have a team here that's right. frankly overqualified relative to our market cap. Let's pair up with them. Let's see what they can do on these projects. And if they have success, we're there with them along for the ride. And so that's, it's you know, mutually beneficial for sure, the agreement. And you know, they've been terrific uh, partners and shareholders and advisors. They have two members on our board now. And so it's really kind of became a relationship where we're really working together here to ultimately make a discovery. So what's your share structure? So we have 88 million shares outstanding. Okay. Um, yeah, so then like I said, with Denison being our largest shareholder, just under 20%. Warrants, options? Yeah, warrants and options. Uh, none of the warrants are currently in the money. Uh, I think we're sitting around 15 million warrants that are outstanding. Uh, then options would be around 7 million options. Uh, neither, none of those are currently in the money either at this point, yeah. And we have about 5 million in the bank too. So we're, we're in good shape. This current program is going to cost us, you know, less than two million bucks. Uh, with Denison maintaining their thirty percent interest in the project, they'll be paying thirty percent of of the expiration costs, and so we're in good shape for sure. I'm impressed with your background. Uh, I I like to get your team together that's proven track record of success. Um, if you can, if we can pivot a little bit, and if you can talk about capital, like how much capital you have. I love that you got the backing of Denison, but can yeah. you talk about what ca capital you have and then what you plan to, uh, what, what timelines and milestones can you give us? Certainly. So we, when we started this drill program, which we just started at Murphy Lake North, um, we had about five million Canadian in the treasury. Uh, like I said, we're going to be spending, you know, far less than two million dollars on this program. So we easily have enough to carry us through another program in, in Q1 of 2026. So that gives us a lot of opportunities to hopefully have a significant drill result and a lot of opportunity to hopefully lead to share price appreciation. As far as capital, I mean, having Dennis in there obviously strengthened our access to capital, but you know, we were, we were all part of our ISO Energy, our team, you know, we obviously saw that share price go from 30 cents to six bucks, so we did make some money. Yeah. We put that back into COSA and we continue to put that into COSA. And I'm also backed by uh, Inventa Capital, which is really, I guess, an incubator for, for these mining companies. Um, Visa Silver would be our most prominent company right now. Uh, but, you know, Craig Perry, who's an advisor for Costa Resources, he's also was a chairman of Skeena, founder of NextGen, uh, founding CEO of ISO Energy. Yeah. So I think having having that access to capital and having those guys support us, yeah. you know, mixing that in with Denison, I think really makes us a unique story in, in that regard. Yeah, man. You guys check a lot of boxes uh, in terms of risk, like the risking. You, 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 uh, Calm a lot of my fears, or you know, investors would normally fear with uh, you know, the track record you guys have and the team you have in place. Yeah. What kind of upset are we looking at? You guys got the grade. I mean, investors, what kind of upset are we looking at here uh, for people who are bullish on uranium? Yeah, certainly. So I think you just look to the recent success stories. Obviously, the most recent one was our time during ISO Energy, where in a bad uranium market, we, we discovered the hurricane deposit and the price over 18 months went from 30 cents to $6. Wow. And that was pre-resource and just goes to show how valuable mm -hmm. these drill intersects can be. Um, you look at the valuations of a Denison, that's 2 billion US, next gen, just under 4 billion US. These are valuations of pre-cash flow companies that are working towards building a mine. And their valuation is underpinned by these high grade resources they have. So when we're drilling, you know, one single hole can really change the game for a company like us. And we are currently drilling, so it's kind of the most exciting time of the year. And fortunately, I've been a part of you know some of those significant drill holes, and it's yeah. it's really it's really company changing. And so, yeah, I think that's that's the beauty of exploring in this part of the world is the grade, right? Grade is king, and you're able to get some of the most valuable rock in the world here if you do have success. 
So if people wanted to follow your story, how did they get in touch with you? How did they follow your story? Is there some link yeah. or a website you can Yeah, log on to our website, coastalresources.ca. We can email us through that. We're active on getting back to people. You can sign up for our email newsletters and things like that on there. We're also active on LinkedIn and Twitter or X, look up Costa Resources, reach out to us on that and we'll get right back to you. And where are you trading and what's your ticker? So we are trading on the TSX Venture under the ticker COSA, C-O-S-A, and also on the OTC under the ticker C-O-S-A-F, COSA F. Great. Well, I'm very bullish on uranium and I'm, I'm finding your story very convincing and I appreciate you being here. Uh, for the record, I am not an investor, but that's likely to change soon and uh, I appreciate your time. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Thanks so much.